Hello students, how are you? I hope you all are well. So today I am going to start a very interesting topic that is forms of energy. Okay, in my previous video you know that I had started your third chapter energy and in my previous video I had completed the concept of energy, the concept of work and also the concept of work energy theorem. So today I am going to start your next topic that is in your page number 46 that is forms of energy so okay today i am going to explain you the forms of energy so okay before starting the concept of different forms of energy i want to explain a one thing to you through this example okay listen to the example and i am also want to ask a question to you through this example and you have to give me the answer also okay what is the question just take an example if i am taking a very small stone a piece of stone on my head if i am placing it on my head and uh, can you think that it can hurt me of course not because of we are just simply placing it over here and it cannot hurt me but it but if i will take this stone to some height like this and from there if i will release the stone then of course it can hit on my head and now it can hurt me or not of course it can hurt me although it can hurt me little but it can hurt me now because of i am taking a small stone if i will take a big stone then it can hurt me more also so if I ask you that why the stone is hurting me now, then your answer will be very simple. You can say that sir, because of the stone is now moving towards your head. Earlier it was just at rest. It was stationary. But now it is moving towards your head. Of course, this is the answer. So basically, the this is the first form of energy also. That is the due to the motion of the object. So the things which are in a motion, they must have some sort of energy. And that energy is called the kinetic energy so this is the first type of energy also you can see the definition so in this definition you can see kinetic energy is this form of energy is due to the motion of an object so basically those things which are in a motion they have some sort of energy so that energy which is due to the motion of the object is called the kinetic energy so we can also see the several examples are given in your book and one thing is also important that is written in your book you can see here also under this definition this point is written change in kinetic energy is equal to work done so now we have to understand this statement also okay now i am going to explain this statement also and it is very important statement and through this statement we can learn so many things that are also in your book so we will learn these things later on so okay take the same example again to understand this thing when the stone was just at rest that time the stone is not able to hurt me but when i took this stone to some height and from there if i release this of course it now starts moving in the downward direction and it can hit on my head and it can hurt me also so the first point is this is the very important point is this when the things are generally at rest means the things are not in a motion that time their kinetic energy is zero we can say the mathematical value is zero. Why? Because of when the objects are at rest, then they don't have any kinetic energy because of the objects are not moving. So we can say that in that case, the kinetic energy of the object is zero. So when I took the, so when I place this stone over here, then it has a zero kinetic energy. So listen carefully, very important thing. But when I took this stone to this height, that time I did some work on the stone. Now you know that the definition of the work also when we, are, when we are applying a force on the object and the object displaces through some distance, in that case we can say that the work is done. Even in this case the work is done. You can see when I took this stone from here, from a zero point to some height, to some distance, then the work is done in this case. How I am applying the force on the object? I took this stone from here, it means I am applying the force and, and I took this to this height it means it also displaces from this height to this height okay suppose this chalk is a piece of stone when the stone is just simply placing here like this then it cannot be able to hurt me means it has a zero kinetic energy because the chalk is not moving but when i took this stone means just suppose this is a stone and when i took this stone from here to this height it means i had done some work on this stone how because of I had applied the force and I took this stone to, to this much height. It means 
Now when I release this stone from here, then it starts moving in the downward direction. Now why this stone is moving? So listen carefully. Earlier it has a zero kinetic energy. And now just suppose I had done the work that is equal to 10 joule. Means I had applied the force here on this stone and I took this stone to this much height. Suppose I am applying a 5 Newton force here and I took this stone to a distance of 2 meter and we know that force is 5 Newton and the distance is 2 meter. So what is the value of the work? That is 5 into 2. 5 into 2 is 10. 10 joule work I had spent on this chalk, on this stone. So just take, earlier it has a zero kinetic energy, but now I had applied 5 Newton force and took this to a 2 meter height. It means I had done a work of 10 joule on this chalk. Now at this height, that work which I had done on this chalk is stored in this chalk as a form of energy. So what is this form of energy? This is called potential energy. We will also learn in detail about this one in the next type that is also the type of different forms of energy. So just understand the concept. When I do the work on this stone and I took this stone to this much height, it means I, have, I had spent 10 joule of work on this chalk. Now this 10 joule of work is stored in this chalk as a form of energy that is called potential energy. So basically this potential energy is due to the position of the object. Earlier its position was here but after doing the work its position changes now its position is here. So it means I do the work on this and 10 joule work I spend on this chalk and it's stored in it as a form of energy. Now this chalk has a potential energy that is also is equal to 10 joule. So exactly the work we had done on the object only that much the object gains the energy. So earlier it has a zero energy that is zero kinetic energy but when I do the work 10 joule on this chalk and I took this chalk to this height then it has a 10 joule of potential energy now because of its position is changed now. So when I release this chalk from here now this 10 joule of potential energy changes into kinetic energy. So it starts moving in the downward direction like this. So basically when we are doing the work on the objects, its kinetic energy changes. How? Earlier it has a zero kinetic energy, but when I do the work on it, then it has a 10 joule of kinetic energy. Because I do the work of 10 joule on this chalk, then this chalk has a 10 joule of kinetic energy. So this is the concept. When we are doing the work on the object, then its kinetic energy changes. So it means earlier it has a zero kinetic energy. Now it, when, I am, when I am doing the work on the chalk or on the stone, then its energy changes. Now its energy is equal to 10 joule. Means I had applied the work 10 joule on this chalk. Now this chalk has a 10 joule of energy and it will move with this 10 joule of energy in the downward direction. Now this is called the kinetic energy. So I hope this is clear to you. So now see here. Now we know very well that when we are doing the work then it always changes the kinetic energy of the object. So means work done is equal to change in kinetic energy. So basically the kinetic energy of the object depends upon two things the speed of the object and also the mass of the object. We will learn this one also in detail in your next classes. Now you have to only understand the definition. So basically the kinetic energy is due to the motion of the object. When the objects are in a motion due to their motion they have some sort of energy that energy is called the kinetic energy. So okay now see the Examples are given to you. The first example, it is exactly the same examples which are given in your book. So, okay, the first example is bullet fired from a gun. So, we know that when we are firing a bullet from a gun, then it can penetrate through a, through a tough surface also. It can penetrate a tough surface also. Why? Because of that time, it has a huge amount of kinetic energy. So, with this kinetic energy, it can penetrate the tough surface. Okay, now see the second. A falling stone can enter into the soft soil. We know this one also when we when a stone is falling in the downward direction and the so soil is very soft there means it is a kind of mud there then it can go deeper into the mud by because of its because of the stone is moving in downward direction and it must have a kinetic energy and with the help of this kinetic energy it can enter deep into the soft soil okay see the third tide of the sea throws sea shells to the shore because of the tides have kinetic energy and with the help of this kinetic energy they can throw the shells to the seashore okay now the fourth example is cricket ball breaks a window pan you can see this one also it is a very important example also and simple example we know that 
when we hit a ball with a bat and if by chance it strikes to a window pane then it can break the window pane why because of that time a ball has a kinetic energy a coconut can damage the head of the person of course if a person is standing under the tree of a coconut and if by chance the coconut falls from the tree of course when the coconut is falling in the downward direction then it has a kinetic energy and with this kinetic energy it can damage the head of the person so i hope all these examples are clear to you so then our next topic is potential energy so okay what is the potential energy as i had taken the example that time when i was explaining the concept of kinetic energy that time i told you that just take an example of a piece of stone suppose this is a stone and now i am going to explain with the help of same example to clear this potential energy as i told you when the stone is just simply placing like this over the head like this that time this stone has zero energy but when i do the work on this stone and i took this stone from this point to this point now you can see i do the work on this stone now its position get changed earlier its position was here and now its position get changed now the total work done which i do on this stone stored as a form of potential energy why because of now it is able to do the work how it means it can able to move in the downward direction you can see now it has a kinetic energy like this earlier it has zero energy but after when we are doing the work on this stone its position get changed due to the change of the position the energy this stone has is called the potential energy and then this potential energy also changes into kinetic energy like this see this one again it has a zero energy after doing the work its position get changed because of its position is changed now so the total work done which i done on this stone is stored as a form of potential energy in this stone now when i release this stone that potential energy is converted into kinetic energy like this so it means basically potential energy and kinetic energy are interconvertible we will also study about this one later on in detail so basically what is the definition of the potential energy see this one this form of energy is due to the position of the object listen carefully this form of energy is due to the position of the object when we changes the position of the object that time the total work done which we had done on the object to change its position is stored as a form of potential energy in the object means i do the work on this stone to change its position total work done which i had done on this is stored as a form of potential energy in this stone and when i release this stone then that potential energy is converted into kinetic energy so this is the point so basically due to the position of the object those energy which the object has is called the potential energy so now see the examples okay now the first example these all examples i had taken from the book so first example is hydroelectric stations hydroelectric stations water is stored at a height and from this height the water releases to fall on the special wheels that is called turbines which further runs the generator and produces the electricity so in this way the potential energy of the water is used to produce the electricity so the second example is mechanical watches are fitted with springs which are wound to gain potential energy so we know that we are using the spring and you can take the example of the toy car also when we are wound the key of the toy car and the total work done that we are doing on the key is stored as a form of potential energy and when we release the car then it moves in the forward direction that potential energy then used or converted into kinetic energy so i hope this is clear to you so now see the third a loaded gun of course a loaded gun has a form of potential energy why because of the springs of the loaded gun has a potential energy and when we press the trigger of the gun then the bullet fires so in this way the potential energy of the springs converted into kinetic energy so now the next example is of a sling even this sling is also works on the principle of potential energy how when we stretch the rubber band of the sling then the work done which we are doing on the rubber band then time that stone on which we do the work by the help of this rubber band and when we stretch this rubber band that work is stored as a form of potential energy and when we release the rubber band then the stone shoots like a missile then it means the potential energy of the rubber band or the stone is converted into kinetic energy and the last is the raised hammer you can see the picture of this example also in your book 
so when we are fixing a nail into the wood how we can fix the nail into the wood we often use a hammer and when we take the hammer and when we change the position of the hammer like this way that time we do the work on the hammer it means its position gets changed and the work done which we do on the hammer is for is stored as a form of potential energy in the hammer and when we release this hammer to fall over the nail head then it fall then it strike over the nail head and then the nail head fixes into the wood so all these examples are the potential energy so the next form of energy that is your third form of energy in your book this is electrical energy so it is clear from the name those energy which we are getting from the electricity is called electrical energy so you can see most of our appliances run on electricity and you can take some examples also like tubes fans water pumps ac ovens tv mobiles and many more things which works with the help of electricity so this is the third form that is electrical energy so now the next form of energy is thermal energy so what is the thermal energy it is also known as heat energy so sun is the main source of heat we know that we are getting the heat from the sun so sun is a major source of the heat and we also burn fuels like coal petrol diesel and wood to get heat energy from them so in other words we can also define heat as heat is a form of energy which gives us sensation of warmth and coolness so so the first point is the thermal plants in the thermal plants heat energy is used to produce the electricity how first of all heat energy is used to boil the water then the steam of the boiled water is used to run the wheels of the turbines which further runs the generator and produces the electricity so in this way heat energy is used in the power stations to produce electricity okay now the second point is to run railway engines the steam of the water is also used to run the railway engines first we got the steam from the boiling water and how we can boil the water with the help of heat energy so basically it is used to run the railway engines the next third point is third example is heat energy is used to cook our food so we use this one very well in our day to day life we cook our food and how we can cook our food with the help of heat and we use this heat energy to cook our food now the fourth point is for warming our rooms even the heat energy is also used in the winter season for warming how we use the heaters for this and the sixth point is hot water for better cleaning of the clothes even we use hot water for cleaning our clothes also so in this way we use this heat energy so basically this is the concept of heat energy so okay now the next form of energy in your book on your page number 50 is light energy okay what is the light energy it is a very important form of energy it plays a vital role in our life why because of light is a form of energy which gives us sensation to see the objects with the help of light we can see the objects you can suppose if you are in a dark room and if there is no light is available in that room are you able to see the objects of course not so we can see the things only with the help of light even you can think about the night also if there is no electricity at night no any bulb is glowing there then can you see the things of course not so day time the sun is the major source of light even during night time we can use candles lanterns lamps led bulbs so many things for the light so the light is also a form of energy which makes us to see the object so we can see the things with the help of light energy so i hope this is clear to you so now you we can see the different examples related to the light energy the first is it is used in laser shows okay what is a laser show have you ever visited to the science city if you had visited then i am sure that you had seen there a laser show in laser shows there is a high beam of energetic light which is used to create different kinds of scenes even this laser is also used in the medical field how the laser is used to make the cuts and the holes in the body parts in the laser operations so this way the light energy is used in the medical field line also and also it is used to create different scenes in the laser shows so now the next is energy of blue light is used to heal joints of newborn baby so this 
light energy is also used to heal the jaundice of newborn babies okay now the third is light beam of high energy are used in film projectors we know that what are film projectors we know in projectors to produce different kind of images different light beams are used and you can see the fourth part also it is also used in search lights and the fifth point is flood lights are used to lit large areas so during night time to lit large flood areas such lights are used also there so in this case we use the light energy and also in the sixth part you can see this energy is also used to kill the germs in many medical instruments light energy is used to kill the germs so in this way we use this light energy in our life so i hope this is clear to you okay now the next form of energy is sound energy sound is a form of energy that gives us sensation to hear means you can see the definition sound is a form of energy that gives sensation of hearing so with the help of sound energy we are able to hear just suppose you are sitting in a sound proof room and no sound is entering in that room then can you able to hear something of course not so it means if there is no any production of sound energy then we are not be able to hear something so sound is a form of energy which gives us sensation to hear so okay now see the uses of sound energy the first point is ultrasound so in ultrasound ultrasound is used to detect defects in our body system in ultrasound sound of frequency more than audible range is used to find the defects in our body system okay how this ultrasound works it is not in your syllabus but in your higher classes you will be learn about this one also so for this time you have to learn this much only that it is used to find the defects in our body system so okay now the second point is to locate the position of aeroplane how we can locate the position of the aeroplane with the help of this sound energy even this is also not in your syllabus you have to just learn this one only i will explain you little bit about this one but in your higher classes you will be able to learn in detail this concept and it concept is based on the reflection of sound how suppose this is earth and the aeroplane is here it has a, at some certain height and high sound waves are sent towards the plane after striking the plane the sound waves turn back to the earth again and this time is then measured by a machine and the how much distance the sound waves are travel throughout this journey that is also measured so by this way we can locate the position of the plane so the next point is submarines use the same principle of sound reflection even in this case the same reflection of sound is used to locate the position of the submarines also and the fourth point is it is also used in musical instruments so you know that different musical instruments produce different kind of sounds so like this way sound energy is also produced or used in different musical instruments so now you can see the next point is it is used to find defects in machine parts also so the same reflection of sound wave this principle is used in the machine parts also how the high frequency sound waves are also used to find the defects in machine parts it is also works on the principle of reflection of sound so the last point is tuning forks okay the tuning forks are used to produce different frequency sounds so these tuning forks are used in the laboratories for different experiments where we need to produce different frequency sounds so okay all these are examples of sound energy i hope all these examples are clear to you so the next topic is very important topic so you have to see this topic carefully this is on your page number 51 and this topic is interconversion of energy okay what is the meaning of this point interconversion of energy okay before explaining this point i had explained the different forms of energy that time i had explained the concept of kinetic energy and also the concept of potential energy so basically the total sum of energy is always equal to the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy and the sum of this kinetic and potential energy is also called the mechanical energy so mechanical energy is based on these two types of energies that is kinetic energy and the potential energy so basically these both energies are interconvertible means we can convert one form of energy into another form of energy so now you can see the definition 
कन्वर्जन ऑफ वन फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी इन टू अनदर फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी इज कॉल्ड ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ एनर्जी और इंटर कन्वर्जन ऑफ एनर्जी सो इट मीन वी कैन कन्वर्ट वन फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी इन टू अनदर फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी सो बेसिकली दिस इज द कॉन्सेप्ट दैट वी कैन कन्वर्ट वन फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी इन टू अनदर फॉर्म ऑफ एनर्जी ओके नाउ वी कैन टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ पेंडलम बिकॉज ऑफ इन योर बुक एन एक्टिविटी इज गिवन टू यू एट इज यूज टू एक्सप्लेन द कॉन्सेप्ट ओके यू कैन ऑल्सो ट्राई दिस वन एट योर होम so you just take a ball and tie this ball with a thread and you can hold this ball like this with the help of thread so you can see this is a thread and here is a ball that is tied by this thread so you can see how here also in this case there is a stand and a bob or a ball simple ball is tied here you can see here it is called bob in your previous classes you had learned about this one also that how the pendulum works that how the motion of the pendulum is okay now i will explain this one again also so this is a ball it can be a ball you can take a ball also so it is tied by this thread so you can see it is at a stationary position stationary position means it is at a rest and if we take this ball to one side like this we are stretching this ball to this side it means here when the bob is at rest that time it has a zero kinetic energy because of it is at rest so it has no any kinetic energy because of it is not moving so when we are taking this bob to this side it means we are doing some work on the bob as i explain you that when uh, when we are doing the work on the object then there always be a change in kinetic energy of the object so you just suppose the bob is at rest and when we are stretching this bob when we are holding this bob to this side like this so it means we are doing the work on the bob means we are applying the force on the bob and it displaces through some distance so in this case we are doing the work on the bob and when now you can see we are doing the work and just suppose again we are doing a 5 joule of work to bring this bob from this position to this position it means just suppose we are doing 5 joule of work here and i took this ball from here to here so it means i do the 5 joule of work so now you can see its position get changed how earlier its position was here now its position get changed okay whenever there is a change in position what will happen it means there will be this ball is gaining now potential energy why because of its position is changed now we know the definition of the potential energy potential energy is due to the change in position of the object it means we had done a 5 joule of work here on this bob it means that 5 joule of work is stored as a form of potential energy here so now its position get changed so its position get changed like this its position is now here so i do the 5 joule of work here so its position get changed so this 5 joule of work is stored as a form of potential energy here and when i release this bob from here then this bob moves towards the another end like this so it will start swinging like this so it moves in so it moves towards the another end you can see here it means that time this 5 joule potential energy is converted into kinetic energy throughout this from this point to this point so it then it energy is converted into kinetic energy why because of the bob starts moving like this so it means it reaches to the another end with the 5 joule of energy that energy is kinetic energy with the 5 joule of kinetic energy and then it reaches to the another extreme end you can see here again that time this kinetic energy again stored as a form of potential energy why because of this time again its position get changed so this time this energy is stored as a form of potential energy here again and when the bob is again released from this point then it starts moving towards the another end so like this way the bob continuously swinging it means in this case when the bob reaches to the extreme end that time this energy is converted as a potential energy but when the bob is reaches after reaching to extreme end it's moving to the another end then that potential energy is converted into kinetic energy so in this case potential kinetic potential kinetic energies both energies are interconvertible so you can see here here in these two points there is a potential energy and during the motion of the pendulum there will be a 
kinetic energy. So basically, potential energy is changed into kinetic energy, and then when it reaches here, then again this kinetic energy changes into potential energy. And again, when this ball starts moving into the other extreme end, then again this potential energy converted into kinetic energy. In the whole journey, throughout the swinging of the pendulum, the energy will remain the same. So basically, it means this is a conversion of one form of energy. into another form of energy so i hope this is clear to you so okay when i had explained the concept of kinetic energy and the potential energy that time i had explained you the examples and these all examples are given in your book also in all these examples there is a interconversion of energy how you can see here in the case of kinetic energy we had learned that example of one falling stone tide of sea falling coconut ball hit with the bat in all these example there is also interconversion of energy how you can see we can take just a, a one example i already explained you all that examples in the case of gun there is a compressed spring of course when the spring is compressed it means its position gets changed that time the compressed spring has a potential energy when the trigger is pressed then the compressed spring is released so that spring the potential energy of the spring then converted into kinetic energy so that is why the bullet fires so in this case there is a conversion of energy and now you can see also the case of potential energy we had read the examples under this point also these examples are mechanical watch loaded spring sling strike of hammer and many more even in this case there is a conversion of energy why because when we are stretching the rubber band of the sling that time its position gets changed and that time it has a potential energy but when we release the rubber band rubber band shoots like a missile so in this case again the potential energy is get converted into kinetic energy so i hope this point is clear to you so i think it is enough for this week you have to read this much only and after that i will start the next topic law of conservation of energy in my next video so till then you have to read this much only and still if you have any confusion then you have my contact number also you can contact me so till then you should read this one so thank you